The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Four. Four. Welcome, friends, to Golf is a Four-Letter Word, the show that gives you the inside scoop on the best public courses in New England and other golf hotspots. So whether you're a worm burner or a total ace... Join us at the 19th hall while we talk all things golf. Now approaching the tee box, your hosts, Craig and Janine Dufton. Oh, no, no, no. We are live at the EXP Soundstage where they help you find or sell the perfect home. But I'm David Garofalo and Mr. Jonathan's with us here. That's the bad news. The good news is that Craig and Janine will be back next week from Hawaii with a great show. And I've got some more good news Joining us today, Joanne Flynn from Wyndham Country Club in Wyndham, New Hampshire. This is the Front Nine, and it's brought to you by EXP Realty. And that can, you can uh, reach them at www.craigdufton.com. There we go. Thank you for coming on this with us. Well, and you know us. I do, And you yes. know <laughs> you, you were confused coming in, and you say, you guys really don't golf. Why are we doing a golf show? I, it did cross my <laughs> <Yes>. mind. Dr- <laughs> driving over, I said, hmm, I don't ever remember seeing one of them tee it up. So. Not at all. Not at all. So um, uh, Craig and Janine had to uh, run off to Hawaii, and they'll be back next week. So uh, we said, okay, we'll jump in and fill in for you. And I can't wait for them to come back, not only for me to stop doing this, but to see how bad we, we did this or what they say. <laughs> They've been in contact with me. They said you're doing just yeah, fine. Yeah. And they're having a blast over in Hawaii. I've been getting lots of pictures. All it right. looks amazing. Good. The show must go on. That's yes. the idea of it. So uh, the first question, only because uh, I don't know a lot about golf, is going to be do you allow smoking at your golf course? <laughs> Yes, we do. Yes. Outside. Yes. Outside smoking. Yes. Some don't, though. Um, most locally, I think, yeah. too. I wonder the reasoning behind, of course, you're outside. Is it because people are going to leave their butts around and leave oh, a mess? That, that is an issue. That Honestly, happens. it does happen. Yeah. I mean, with cigars, it's not so bad because they usually degrade. Yeah. You okay. know, so that's not as big an issue. I would say more people don't want you on the deck because other people are there and if they don't want the smoke. Yeah, yeah. So, so worry about the other people. So I, I looked you up a little bit, although I've known you for a long time. I said, let me let me look up so I can intelligently ask a question or two. I uh, started off as a golf pro at, at Lakeview Country Course in 1984. Mm. Four years old. You didn't have pro. to make I was going to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was really like 95. Right. <laughs> um, Ten years later, director of Wyndham Golf Club and a member of the New England Golf course owners so you are an owner of the golf course right yeah we actually own two facilities my family oh okay what's the other one the other one is far corner golf course in boxford okay okay so uh you started at a young age with golf or your family's always been into golf always golf so you brought you were brought into it right my father was a golf pro okay actually he started out playing and caddying as a young kid and then went kind of through the ranks became a pro and then got into buying courses, building, managing, that type of thing. How do you become a golf pro? Well, it's a little different now. There's a lot more schooling involved, but you basically have to pass a playing ability test and you have to go to certain schools and you know do some requirements, rules, schools, and different things. Teaching. So if I can shoot 90 per nine holes, um, <laughs> would I qualify? I would say tennis would be a good option for you. Ah, Fair enough. <laughs> Although I know you're a dancer, so actually you shouldn't be that bad because balance is important, right? And balance is very important in golf. It's true. So there you go. I've always said that. So you just, uh, to be a golf pro, you just don't know, have to know, be able to pass the test. You have to be good at it, too. You have Correct. To. Okay. Correct. Yeah, you have to take, and you, they, you usually take that early on because once you really get into the business, you don't play as much as right. people might think. And, and part of the thing is a great golfer is somebody that practices all the time. Typically, Yeah. 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 Well, it, at a certain point, and I know from coaching gymnastics, I wasn't a great gymnast when I was a kid, but... Uh, when I got into coaching, you start to learn what the common mistakes are, body mechanics, you know, wh- where are you generating your power from? And so even though a golf pro, as they get on in years, they may not be playing as often, their eye is still going to be a, just sure. as sharp sure. for yeah. teaching a and, lesson. And you do, right, right. I mean, you, you tend to teach a lot more. You know, there are just, some people that just teach. I have two people employed that just teach year round. Actually, we have a facility they teach throughout the winter. Which is kind of cool. It's they're indoor bays, but you hit out into the driving range. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it's heated, and there's all the technology and 
and stuff. So that's kind of fun. Wow. That was that was a good question of what do you do all winter long? <laughs> <laughs> We're in New England, those that are listening to the show, and cold, long, cold winters. Sure. So we have that so you know people can maintain their skill through the winter. Um, I like to kind of hit the islands. Sure, so <laughs> sure. <laughs> so when I'm not working at the course, which we do stay open year-round, so as long as there's no snow, you can play. No kidding. Like that. All the way up here in New England. Yeah, yeah. We usually do a New Year's Day tournament. 100, 120 people. Really? And I'd say maybe 50% of the time we pull it off. Which what? one wins the frozen ground or <laughs> the oh, nine iron? Good bounce, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a knack to uh, hitting it off the pond when it's frozen. You know, you got to learn that bounce. <laughs> wow, year round. So your public golf courses? Yes. Both of them? Mm -hmm, both. Yeah. Okay. All right. I never had private. Um, no, golf. my father was in a private club kind of uh, beginning of his career. Yeah. And uh, I, I like one boss versus uh, 300. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, yeah, because everybody that's in the, in the feels like they own the place. Sure, of, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, and honestly, I have, I have a very small membership, and they're great. And really, it's it, most people, you know, but every once in a while you might get that three or so that make yeah. it what challenging. The, what did the transition look like from being a golf pro to deciding that you wanted to first manage and then own golf courses? So my father, just I guess he just wanted to develop courses, wanted to improve courses. When he really started, he was the pro first. Then we bought my, our first, first course in like 1973. It was a little nine-hole golf course. And then we all worked it, and he stayed at the club. And then when it got later on, a lot of the courses in Boston, early 80s, had been let go. They were all in disarray. So it was kind of saving it. So you were saving the golf courses. And we went into George Wright and Franklin Park and renovated them and, and got them back to where they are. And honestly, today, they're, they're both functioning. They're great. They're very, very busy courses. We don't manage them anymore, but the city of Boston still has them. And um, I think it was kind of saving that. And then ownership was natural. You know, he was really an entrepreneur, so I grew up with that. So when we opened... Actually, Wyndham was 26 years ago, believe wow. it or not. Wow. I know. I know. I look like I'm 30, but... You do. So did any of them start from... Wasn't a golf course, or they were all golf courses? Um, Wyndham, Wyndham had been just a farmland. Oh. And somebody had tried to put a golf course in very early, uh, late 80s, early 90s, when everything hit, when the real estate, you know, everything went, went bad. So we actually bought the course from the bank, and a few holes were done. It wasn't, you know, we went right. in, we completed everything, built the, you know, the building and everything. So you have to design the golf course. So I, yes. I see things from other golf courses, as ignorant as I am, I don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, designed by so-and-so, designed by so-and-so. Right. Did you design it, or did you get a designer? The person, when, when it was originally started, the David Graham, who is a tour pro from Australia, designed the golf course. So when we bought it, we had that design, and then my father, you know, worked with that, basically. Um, you know, at that point, he had played golf for 50 years or something like that, so obviously had a lot of experience. Did your dad look at the design and say, too many damn sand traps. It's too many. Let's take three of them out. He should have said too many damn trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've been taking those out for years. All right. It, it, very interesting of, of your business as a business person. Uh, it's very, very complicated because it's not you own a store, which is the um, pro shop where it's a store like I, I own a store. You own a restaurant because there's a restaurant in there. Um, there's a golf course. There's maintenance. There's year-round. I mean, it's very, very complicated. Right. There's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. There really are. So, I mean, you need, you need a solid superintendent because your golf course is probably your biggest risk, right? That if something's going to go wrong, I mean, the sprinkler system, yeah. even like, right, you know, in another month, we'll be blowing out the sprinkler system. But if you don't do it properly, you're going to be popping heads in the, you know, in the spring when you turn it on. And that's, you know, thousands of dollars. They have golf carts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The carts are another. And they, yeah, you have to repair them and fix yeah. them. Oh, so I'm, I'm, I just ordered a greens mower for $59,000. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was painful. Nice. Yeah. Well, uh, and honestly, one of the fairway units, you have no idea. I mean, it's $75,000 for a fairway unit. Wow. So it's a big, it's a big overhead. That's farm equipment at that point. Yeah, it is. It is. So this, this takes me to the weird question here. Um, how many acres is this golf course? 154. 154 acres. So as a businessman, and I, I remember the 80s comedy with um, Caddyshack, Rodney Dangerfield, right? He said, I'll tell you, golf course is a cemetery. It's the biggest waste of prime real estate. 
as painful as that sounds, and I know these are golf people and, and they love it, people are paying a small amount of rental fee to basically play golf in a big empty, empty thing. It's not business savvy. Yeah. Well, it, it kind of doesn't make sense. You know, that was 1980 and him saying it as a joke. But real estate is crazy right now. Well, especially now. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. You know what it is? It's a passion, right? So I guess my father's passion initially passed on to me was you want to grow the game. It's a safe place, especially kids. We do a lot of stuff with kids. Uh, we do the Boys and Girls Club in Salem. And I know you guys support them. Yeah. Um, great organization. But it gives kids a safe place to be. You know, I'd rather have them there than at the mall or God knows yeah, where, wherever yeah. now or playing video games. Um, so it really is. It's it's a labor of love. You know, I mean, I'm down the road, you know, who knows, but I'm yeah. certainly enjoying do, it so right now. So as an industry, do you see that that happen? You must belong to the big organization and all Sure, yeah. Guys. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm a PGA professional. So um, I would say we're seeing some courses go for sure. But at one point in the 80s, 90s, they got completely overbuilt. Uh, now, I mean, they're just really, honestly, at one point, just too many golf courses. Now, COVID reaction, we are seeing a big surge. We had a big surge in golf last year, and it's maintained pretty much this year. Not quite as busy, but similar. So hopefully those courses are a little bit busier, so it's an easier decision to make. Right. You know, I think a lot of times with family, like with my father, you know, we came, we were in the business, but when, you know, when he passed away, I mean, we just naturally went on. So it's... Who, the next generation and what they want to do, I, I think, with a lot of co courses. Yeah, well, I know down in Florida, um, real estate is so crazy that's down there, and there's more golf courses that are around. And you know what? We retire. We go to Florida. We want to be able to go golf and right. stuff. But the, the cost of doing business is just, uh, unless it ends up being hundreds of dollars around, or, you know, is that the next step? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I, don't think, I don't think you can support it. But people want to go to, to Florida, to your point. Yeah. And they want to live on a golf course or they want sure. to live on, you know, the ocean or whatever. So there's got to be that. Yeah. You know, they have to have that. So With COVID, uh, have you experienced many, if any, staffing issues? Uh, I would say the restaurant, a little bit tighter, you know, a little bit harder to get staff there, along with a lot of our restaurants around here, which is sad. Uh, but it's going okay. The restaurant's open year-round? No, no, okay. no. We um, the restaurant really tapers off probably like November by November first, and honestly, it is a just a grill. We don't do big meals. Yeah, it, yeah. It's you know burgers, dogs, yeah. you know quick things. So a lot of kids summertime jobs and things like that. That's the and that's that's a challenge too. But that's always been a challenge because when the kids go back to school, you know, you love to employ them, right? But you can't lose everybody in September, yeah, right, right? Right? You know, it's like I want to give your child a job. I really do, but but you got to have uh, you know. I guess we have a lot of retirees. Yeah. You know, a lot younger retirees, too. People are retiring younger, and it's like, well, I can work at a golf course a few days a week, play free golf, you know. How many people does it take total? Run we have, thing? like, 35. Oh, really? I would mm. think a lot more. Oh, a I, would th I would have thought it would be 135. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I work very hard. Yeah, <laughs> everybody does for that amount of right. square feet. You well, know? but we don't do, we don't do um, weddings and stuff like that. I occasionally do a private party for friends, but yeah. we don't do, so we don't have that whole catering staff. Yeah. Which would add, you know, that could add four, 30 or 40 people. Sure, sure. So. And, and most of the people employed all year except the people in the restaurant? Um, no, just a couple because a lot of them go to Florida. You know, if they are the retired, some of them go to Florida or travel for the winter. So well, there's really like four of us that are on. Oh, four, yeah, well, okay. and, and, and the teaching pros, so four okay. six people. What kind of skill does it take to actually mow the green? Because it, it, it's, the <laughs> most, it's the most impressive thing that I've ever seen. It's a carpet. It's the most relaxing thing. I used to do it at Lakeview. That used to be my 6 o'clock on Sunday. I'd put on my Walkman, dating myself. But honestly, it was so peaceful to go out there for a couple hours. And it was only nine holes. So you'd get it done. No one would bother you. You're just like, it's, it's not that complicated I to think learn. he asks really? he's fishing for a job. This guy, <laughs> this guy mows his lawn religiously once a week, even if it doesn't need mowing. It's well, you're hired. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. That's how easy that is. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's go to a quick break, and when we return, we have some golf terms to go over uh, that everybody should know. We don't. I looked them up, and, uh, but I'm sure she does. And uh, we have the 10 rapid-fire questions for Joanne Flynn from Wyndham Country Club. We'll be back in just a minute. May the mortgage girl smile upon us. I love thee, Michael of North Suburbia. And I thee. <clears throat> I guess you guys are worried about competitive bids. 
Don't be. Our fairway advantage pre-approval is so powerful, you can even compete against cash. So we will triumph. <laughs> <laughs> I did say we'd get you home. We are forever indebted to you, my lord. Honey, you're being weird. So get started with Elk Mortgage Team today. Call Josh Friaz on 603-714-2438 or visit elkmortgageteam.com. Okay, we're back. This is the Back Nine, and it's brought to you by Scott's Roofing. Scott's Roofing, leading the roofing industry with quality and customer care. They treat you and every customer like family. It's Scott's Roofing. Contact them today and see for yourself. Call 603 505 Four four five five for all your roofing needs. It's Scott's Roofing. So uh, let's, let's talk about the pro shop. What uh, with with respect to golf rentals, what percentage of people don't own their clubs and just rent the clubs from you? Well, actually, with COVID, they wouldn't let you. We weren't oh. allowed to rent clubs for a while. It's a hard surface. You could lie um, solid and. Hey, wasn't my decision. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that was t- that was tough too because you had more people taking it up, right? Than you know, and then you're, well, I can't, you're into equipment. Now, we, I would say, um, because it's a little bit of a challenge course, 18-hole course, we don't get that many beginners, so most people have their own clubs. But people travel, so maybe, you know, 3 or 4% don't have their clubs. What about the difference between righties and lefties? Is there a huge difference? As far as availability, yes. I mean, I, my father's a lefty, so I always have to have lefty rentals. I'm lefty, but, too. I are you? need lefty, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but... I mean, honestly, just think of your market share. It's this big compared to right-handed. Sure. So a lot of there's a lot fewer options for them. So so what what's the number? There's ten sets of regular, one set of lefty. Um, yeah, that's probably about yeah. yeah. But is, if if you're talking about sales, sales it might be fifty to one. Really? Oh yeah. Well, a lot of kids too. I think. Not a lot of lefties have money. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> well, present wow. company excluded. Of course, there's an exception to every rule. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize it was it was that bad um, when it when it comes to lefties to righties. Good question. Good question. Okay, uh, let's go over some basic terms that. Um, Newcomers might need to know. I've heard these terms. I this is really up. for Dave. I think he's it secretly is. considering taking up is golfing <laughs> as he's getting older, and he wants to know what these mean when he watches his favorite uh, golfer. I'm, the show's converting I, him. I've tried it many, many years ago, and just awful right off the bat. I, you would think it's like baseball, or you saw the movie um, with the ho- hockey player. Um, oh, you thought you were the next Happy Gilmore? Happy Gilmore or <laughs> something. So I, I can hit a golf ball, I mean, hit a, um, a puck, but when it comes, that ball is awful small, and the, and the head is, is smaller. Are you still playing hockey? No, no. <laughs> but, no. You, but you know what? You could still be playing golf. Yes, okay. which See is that? old people play golf, right? That's yeah. right. And they move the thing. You're approaching. Okay. So uh, I have four terms here. Fade. Fade, yes. Fade is when your ball starts out straight and then just goes to the right. To the right. And and a slice is much bigger. Even so. if I'm a lefty? Well, you're lefty, it's going to go the other way. All right. Is it oh, controllable? Mm, sometimes. <laughs> like Tiger Woods, he can make he the can ball go straight correct. for however long he wants and correct. have it drift. Yes. yes. Like a pool player would do it, and they put a spin to it. Is that yes. how, how, how yes. it ends up working? Yes. So it fades to the right, makes sense. It's yep. fade. So slice. Slice is really when it just, that slice is not controlled. Slice is what most people do when it goes to the right. Really, like a banana ball, you hear them say. Okay. Again, angle, spin. And that's a problem with them. That's a problem with a lot of people, yeah. They've done, you they've, could have that. Yeah, they've done it. <laughs> they, they've done this to cause that to happen. He does have that. Correct. He yeah. does have that. You can tell them on the range because typically, if they're a right-handed golfer, they're set up way over here to uh, try and bring it back in. Okay. Push. Push, it's still going to the right. Who, is it? Who gave you these? I, I got them myself. <laughs> oh, oh, that's why. I, I got them myself. Okay, club face is slightly open. Ball goes a little. And pull. <laughs> pull as it goes the other way. So it's almost the same as fade. It's and slices a push and a pull. Everything. Oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, this is it. Sorry, Craig. No, this I is all like, I got. I feel like I, I got this. So fade, slice, and push all go to the right, but pull goes to the left. Right. For a right-handed golfer. Fade is intentional and if you're good. If you're Slice good. is completely unintentional. And a draw would be the controlled draw, version of the fade. Yeah, a, a draw is your talented, well, if you would, if you, you can make it draw. Look at him pulling out Most a word. Players, no, most players list. hook it. You didn't get to hook, did you? 
Nope. That's that one goes to the right as well. <laughs> goes in the four I had. So w- when it comes to shooting pool, there was a way to end up shooting pool that it would go and it would almost back up a little bit. Right. I've seen that on TV that the guy hits the ball, pros, yes. and then it drops, and then it actually goes the other way. And I go, yes. oh, my God. So th- that's it's, Well, you need a lofted club, too. So it's between the club and the angle. And, 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 and your club face. So all when you're talking about whether it's going right or left, it's, you know, your backswing, the angle you're coming in, and the position of the club face. And, and that's going to dictate. how much grit that club face actually has to be able to grab hold the of the spin. ball? Yeah, yeah. Those lines that are on the, the golf The grooves? Course. Yeah. The grooves, yeah. Actually, years ago, Ping had a club that had square grooves. And it put great spin on the ball, and the USJ actually outlawed it. Outlawed it, okay. <laughs> it was Cheating. too easy to hit. Somebody People were having too much fun. Yeah. A- as is ah. the gi- uh, big Bertha. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you would think that would be illegal. It's gigantic. I know. There, it's, when it first came out, I was like, oh, my God, what's happening? And, and everything is that big. Yeah. Uh, all of them. Easier. Yeah. So Easy to hit. Besides possibly meeting you, Joanne Flynn, what are some reasons why someone should visit Wyndham Country Club? Well, I guess we have a lot of programs, so we have something for everybody. We have uh, Sunday night scrambles for beginners, couples, really anybody. We do a trivia contest, too, with a dinner, so it's a little bit of everything. You know, if you're not really a golfer, you can do the trivia questions. It's a fun night out. Okay. Yeah. Mandate? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, don't there, know. You yeah. there you go. Hey, uh, anybody that wants to play, I'm, I don't care. Um, you know, we have the indoor facility. We do a lot of teaching. We have a lot of programs for kids. What are your, what's your take on the, uh, the simulators for these places that pop up indoor driving ranges and that you can play a game on a simulator? Is it? I don't think it does a lot for your swing, but I think for a night out, it's fun. You know, we, we, I looked into it, honestly. I, I don't want to, because then you have a full-blown restaurant. It's just a whole other package that I don't want to have to worry about in January when it snows. Sure. Honestly. All right, it's time for a pressure putts. Oh, let's get to it. Let's do it. It's time for Pressure Pods, the segment where we tee up 10 rapid-fire questions and see if our guests can make pod. Pressure Pods, brought to you by United Compressor and Pump, the experts in industrial compressor and pump installation, maintenance, repairs, and sales. They deliver competent, quick, and incomparable compressor and pump service for commercial and industrial customers in New England. Call United Compressor and Pump today on 603-552-5885. And now, here's today's pressure pumps. All right, the pressure is on. You ready for this? <laughs> sure. You know it can't be tough, right? I don't even know what I'm talking about here. Ten rapid-fire questions to see if you make par. How many terms mean the ball goes to the right? <laughs> 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 Favorite golf movie? Caddyshack. Three iron or three hybrid? Three hybrid. Tiger or Phil? Phil. Really? Absolutely. Favorite I- golf course? Wyndham Country Club. Perfect. Obviously. Cart or caddy? Cart. Favorite female golfer of all time? Oh, Jan Stevenson. Best round you ever played? Score and place? Uh, 72, far corner. Wow. Favorite club? Five wood. Favorite cigar? <laughs> Dos hombres. There we go. Hey. Good. And favorite member of this current panel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part of the panel. Oh, <laughs> you don't have to answer that. Switzerland. You yeah, there we go. There we go. All hey, right. Thanks for goofing off with us. Thank, yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you both very much. It's thank you. time for the quote of the week brought to you by United Pump and Compressor at 603 552 5885. They will be there when you need them. And you find them online at unitedpressercompressor.com. That's unitedcompressor.com. And the quote is by Jack Nicholas. No one's even ever heard of him. Yeah. Uh, this is a game. That is all it is. It is not a war. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you Perfect. so much. Thank you, She's so enlightened. <laughs> She's right now thinking, why did I agree yeah, to sit I, with these two jackasses? The, good, the great news is it's over. And even greater news, Craig and Janine will be back next week. But Joanne Flynn, thank you for winning the Thank, you, thank, thank you, you for playing yeah. with us. And uh, golf is a four-letter word. It'll be back in its, in its beauty next week with Craig and and Janine. Tune in next week. They'll be here back from Hawaii. I'm sure they're going to tell you about some great courses in Hawaii and uh, about uh, horror stories about uh, what happened to this show. But that's it. (laughs) See you next next week. 
The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.